Since 1988, when December 1 of every year was designated as World AIDS Day, the annual event has always been aimed at fostering empathy that is premised on the need to show solidarity with the millions of people living with HIV and AIDS globally. Most people do this by wearing an HIV awareness red ribbon on the day. But then, is that enough? Welcome to this special feature on the World AIDS Day. After leadership, commitment and impact took the front burner last year, it is now time for increasing impact through transparency, accountability and partnerships. As this year's theme says, right to health, making it happen. For clarification on this theme, Africa Health Television spoke with Dr. Ibrahim Atta of the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA, and Mr. Godpa Omorigi, Project Director, HIV at the Society for Family Health. Well, this year we're focusing on the right to health. And we're saying so because health is not um, a gift from government. Health is not uh, a privilege. Health is a right for all citizens. And governments owe the citizens that right to ensure that they are healthy and they are well. And this year's theme, Right to Health, Making It Happen, is <clears throat> our own local flavor of focusing on the issues around how do we make everybody have that right to health? How do we ensure that government provides for all those who need to have drugs, in this, in this regard for HIV and AIDS, or other assistance that they may require? Which is also aimed at um, preventing new infections, which is really quite significant, particularly among young persons, particularly among, you know, pregnant women. They need to, awareness, uh, you know, programs needs to be on. The basics of uh, HIV prevention still needs to, you know, uh, be promoted. And good enough, we have the right tools, we have tested approaches that have worked, you know, um, elsewhere in the world that have also been domesticated in this country. I think it's all, um, calls for all hands being on deck continuously and ensuring that we, you know, um, don't take our, our legs off the pedal and consistently fight. Just how concerned are Africans about this International Day? To commemorate the World AIDS Day, uh, tomorrow I'll be all out to all the to visit one or two um, free and um, counseling centers to get tested though I've been tested before but I'll still want to do it again and I'll be out there with some friends too as well as many of them who are here to get tested like we all know HIV itself is not the worst sickness that can happen to someone there are other terrible uh, sickness that, 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 that do cut one's life short but so well, for me, I'll just be all out there to get tested once again and know my status. And also encourage people, especially especially pregnant women, to go out and get themselves tested so they can stop the transmission from mother and child, so they can get their drugs and prevent themselves from transmitting the disease to the young ones. Um, I think the government of Nigeria is very committed towards eradicating HIV is from uh, our country. Um, of course, you know, there are always challenges when you're fighting an epidemic such as AIDS that is constantly shifting focus, shifting direction. But by and large, government um, has made very strong commitments. We brought in many of our partners, and government is uniting all those partners across the board to address the epidemic. Well, the children are, are very committed. Um, this is our concern to everybody. And we should even in your home, you are aware of HIV and AIDS, and you take precautions you know, even with your family members and your family. So Nigerians are very committed towards the fight and the uh, government is equally committed towards assisting Nigerians to win that fight. In fact, if you look at some of the local um, words for HIV, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's so frightening. You know, um, your bad people will say, I'm too bold. Now it's, um, it's a sickness that defied treatment. Uh, here in Ibo, they call it uh, Abunia Chocha or something that has to do with death. 
So it's um, those, those initial um, approaches to fighting it actually had not helped all this while. And so a lot of people are still scared knowing their status because they still feel that it's, um, it is a death sentence. Um, once I'm HIV positive, that's my life has suddenly come to a halt. But that, 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 that's not the truth. So we need continuous awareness. We just talked about prevention. But we still need to allow people to know that um, HIV is not a death sentence. Now it's, you know, you have drugs that are available that you can call access. And um, what people are also pushing for another client is to crash, you know, stigma through self-testing. Because, you know, those days while growing up, pregnancy was a big deal. But these days you can stay in the comfort of your room, you know whether you're pregnant or not. So people are already thinking along that line to do we allow people to self-test so that once again the proponent of this view feels if people self-test, he can crash stigma because you just know that you know it's not a big deal. I, once I test and I'm positive, even if it also has some other, you know, um, you know, um, all other arrangements that one needs to do. Because the fear again is if people self test and they know the HIV status, won't that would they go and commit suicide and things like that? So those fears are you know are bound. But again, I think it's something that we need to handle, you know, comprehensively uh, as a country to ensure that there are a lot of awareness out there and uh, people really understand that HIV is not a death um, sentence. And we need a lot of people who are positive to come up. Yeah, I think uh, two months ago, uh, precisely September was the last time I had my test. But I do normally have my test twice or thrice a month, like I said. Maybe the, the interval of two or three months, I get myself tested and it always go well. Well, for those um, who already have the virus, I would want to say it's not the end of the world. There are 1,001 diseases and ailments out there that kill even faster than HIV. So that you have HIV is not the end of the world for you. It can be managed, it can be controlled, and um, it's not still a yastic for people to castigate or give you sanctimonious powers attitude as regards um, the virus. For me, I just feel they should um, keep it moving and just be themselves, live their, li live their life, you know. It's not the end of the world. The current estimates point to about um, 3 million people that are currently infected with HIV and AIDS, a bit more than 3 million, uh, based on our 3% uh, statistics. Um, we have currently, we're currently treating about 1 million people plus who are on, currently on treatment on drugs. Um, provided by government and our partners. Uh, we estimate that there may be up to 2 million more outside there who require drugs. And government is making efforts to make sure that the drugs are available so that we can put on drugs. But more importantly, government is also looking at reviewing the statistics accurately. So we've actually planned to have a, a national survey done that will actually give us a very accurate estimate of what our true prevalence is. Okay, in order to help us to plan better uh, and to be able to use our resources more effectively. And that will happen by the end of next year, 2019. We've been able to pass you know, um, a law in this country that really you know, prohibits uh, stigmatizing people because of their status and that that law has been passed and um, not just at the national assembly some states have also domesticated you know th that law and so it's really a, a, an offense for you to criminalize or for you to stigmatize somebody who is hiv infected and that to some extent has helped but i think the big challenge we have is operationalizing that law and just like you have um, you know, there are um, laws in this country that are really, when it comes to implementation or operationalizing it, 
it still remains a big challenge. So, but all hands on deck to ensure that um, you know we don't stigmatize people who are infected or affected um, with HIV because it has a lot of ripple effect. Once you stigmatize persons who are infected with HIV and AIDS or affected, you make them not to um, come out to seek treatment, and that, that can be very catastrophic. Because it means suddenly you, the case fatality can be high because a lot of persons you know, are infected uh, probably don't even know their status. And so if people are not are discriminated against, it further would you know, hinder people from wanting to know whether they are positive or not. And so probably we'll be sitting you know, on the keg of a gunpowder just waiting for time to explode. Because given current data, we have about uh, less than 33% of Nigerians that know their HIV status, and that, that's, that's a big issue. Well, you, I'm sure you've heard of the 1990 targets, and um, we expect, we hope, we pray, we strive towards eliminating HIV and AIDS by 2030. Totally. But along that path, we have the 1990 targets, which are adopted from, from, from the UN system. And um, that speaks to having tested 90% of the population. And of those 90% that are tested, we sure that 90% of them have got drugs to take. And then of those that are taking drugs, we sure that 90% of them are biologically suppressed. There is another, another way to transmit the virus to others. So they are essentially safe. Uh, and so these are local targets, and that's what we are striving towards. Well, there, there is um, a global initiative aimed at um, ending AIDS. Um, for example, we know um, the UNAIDS has come up with the 1990 um, strategy, which ends, intends to end AIDS by 2020. We have other global initiatives also looking at ending it at 2030, I guess, which is the, the global goal, which Nigeria is part of. And um, the 1990 strategy simply says, you know, we need to ensure that 90% of Nigerians know their status, 90% of Nigerians, you know, are provided with treatment, and 90% of Nigerians have their viral load suppressed. All these are, you know, technical terms used in explaining what it means in terms of the fact that you know, if you have 90% of persons knowing their status and the same 90% of persons of the same proportion is on treatment and, you know, the, the viral load is suppressed, it means you're almost there in ensuring that um, the virus is not, um, you know, being transmitted. Because if you take your drug consistently, science has shown that the ability, your ability to transmit the virus is, you know, um, significantly you know impacted so that is why we're pushing for the 1990 strategy the world AIDS day may be once in a year but we're still faced with the task of supporting people living with HIV and AIDS as this year's theme says it's the right to health making it happen so it's either you're affected or you are infected from all of us at AHTV this is Cynthia Asehame saying let's move from sympathy to empathy <laughs>